Hi everybody, I'm Amy Stewart. I'm a writer and an artist and I am taking your questions. So um, feel free to subscribe below and post questions in the comments and maybe I'll answer them in another video. I got a question from a writer who has a very specific question about her situation with her agent. And I'm gonna rephrase the question a little more um, generally just for her privacy, but I think it's really worth thinking about. Her question is basically, how do I know when it's time to look for a new agent? My agent wasn't able to sell my last book and I'm not sure I should give her the next one. Maybe we're not on the same wavelength. Okay, here's what I think. Um, no two agents are alike, just like no two editors are alike. You know, you'll have nine publishers reject a manuscript and the 10th one will snatch it up and make a success out of it. It's totally weird. And you know, sometimes I wonder like, how is that even possible? Because you would think that any agent would be able to recognize a publishable manuscript and any publisher would wanna publish one. Weirdly, it doesn't seem to work that way. I had a friend one time, a good friend, um, had a terrific manuscript and it was rejected by an agent who I thought was gonna be perfect for her. But this agent rejected her book. And uh, my friend, the author, was immediately picked up by another agent. And that agent was able to get her a good publishing deal at a big publishing house right away. So, you know, agents have different tastes, different preferences, and, and they make different judgments and they're not always right. So is it possible that you just have the wrong agent? Yeah, maybe. Is it possible that your agent's feedback on your manuscript was just misdirected and it wasn't in your best interest? Sure, that's possible. Um, I'm gonna give you an example. So with my second novel, which is Lady Cop Makes Trouble, one of the comments I received from my editor was, she said, um, I think you need to make this escaped fugitive more of a menace. I'm just not worried enough about the fact that he's on the loose. This is a big part of the novel that Constance Cop, my protagonist, um, she had to go chase after this fugitive who'd escaped from the jail. So I thought about that and I thought, well, okay, I could just t make this fugitive into like this Hannibal Lecter kind of character, you know, and turn the book into one of those, a killer is on the loose and he must be stopped before he kills again kind of books. But the thing is, that was not the kind of book I was trying to write. I didn't want the readers to be worried about the fugitive's next victim. I wanted them to be worried about my protagonist, Constance, and her job and her future and her well-being. So I listened to her feedback, but I made changes to the novel in a different way than what she suggested. I made it more clear that the stakes were really high for Constance, that a lot of bad things were gonna happen to her if she didn't catch this guy. Another friend of mine who also happens to be an editor said, you know, you want the readers to be worried about Constance's spirit. And that was exactly right. So the point is, people can have a different vision for what kind of book you're writing, or they can sense that something's wrong, but they might have a different idea about how to fix it than what you would come up with. So I guess here's my suggestion, you know, um, treat this like the straightforward business conversation that it is. Remember, your agent and your editor, if and when you have an editor, they're lovely people, but at the end of the day, they're making business decisions. You know, they'll turn you loose if they can't figure out how to make you a part of their business. And they understand that you might have to do the same thing. Um, I just wanna give you a quick side note here. I once, uh, I had a friend one time who was waiting for an offer from a publisher. She's like sitting by the phone, she knows it's gonna ring. And I told her, I said, remember, your publisher is not Santa Claus. This is not Christmas. This isn't a birthday present, it's a business deal. And it's a business deal where they get to write the contract and they get to dictate the terms. So when that exciting life-changing call comes in, treat it like a business deal because you can be sure that they're treating it like a business deal. So um, back, to this, back to this idea about what to do with the agent. I would say first, um, definitely give your agent a chance to read your next manuscript. It's possible that all of her comments and feedback on the last book maybe helped you to become a better writer and that the new book benefits from her advice. 
And if that's the case, she should absolutely have a chance to launch her new book into the world. I mean, remember, she doesn't get paid until you get paid. So she's invested a lot of unpaid labor into you so far. And maybe that's about to pay off for both of you. But if her comments on the new manuscript leave you feeling like things are still not right, it's probably time to have an honest grown-up conversation about why your vision and hers don't align. You know, remember, this is your book. No one is forcing you to take anyone's input. It's perfectly okay to look for another agent who maybe sees things more the way you see them. And while you're doing that, um, to distract yourself from the angst of going through a search for a new agent, start your new book. Always be thinking about the next book. Keep moving forward and keep making art. All right, I hope that helped. Um, feel free to subscribe below, post your questions, and I will uh, maybe answer them in a future video. You can also find me on my website. I send out a newsletter. You can track me down on social media. And um, I teach a lot of classes online as well. So check the links below. I'll give you all that information. Thanks very much.